Welcome, my dear YouTube viewers and my university students to Chapter 5's continuing coverage of thermochemistry. In this video, I will teach you reaction enthalpies. So as it turns out, we can calculate the enthalpy change for a reaction, the delta H Rickson, where Rickson stands for reaction, <laughs> by inserting each reactants and each product's individual delta H sub F values into the following equation where the little sigma symbols here represent the sums of, and these n terms represent the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. Okay, I'll show you how to do this by taking you to an example problem from my university student's homework. I want you to use the values from an enthalpy appendix, which would be appendix C for my university student's recommended text, Chemistry the Central Science 12th edition. Anyway, using that appendix value, please calculate the standard enthalpy change, or delta H Rickson, for each of the following reactions. As it turns out, you can do problems like these by writing out a balanced delta H sub F or enthalpy of formation reaction for each reactant and each product, and then using the methods of Hess's law to manipulate these reactions and thereby arrive at your target equation. In other words, this is a different way of getting to the exact same answer, although this way ends up being a little bit longer. Now, my dear listener, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do both methods. I invite you to pause the video, try this on your own first, then hit play, and I'll show you how to do each method approach with one of these example problems on the board. So there are two different approaches for doing this, and I'm gonna tackle this particular target equation given to us balanced in the list of uh, problems that I just showed you, okay? I'll let you tackle the others on your own later, but using the process that I'm gonna show you now, okay? So again, it's all balanced out. There are two different ways again. The first way is the Hess's Law way, which is a little bit more complicated, and I'm gonna show you in just a moment, but I wanna start out by doing the easy way, at least that's what I call it, the easy way, which is in uh, involving this equation right here. So the delta H for this overall reaction is gonna be equal to the sum of the individual delta H's of formation of products, and uh, in this case we only have one product, but you could do it if you had multiple products as well, minus the analogous term for the reactants, okay? Now again, this sigma symbol here just means sum of, and the letter N's here represent the individual respective coefficients or number of moles for each reactant and product, okay? So in order to get these values here, and I realize that's a really crazy looking term, we have to go to an appendix of thermodynamic table and look up specifically the thermodynamic heats of formation for each of these substances in the specific physical state, solid, liquid, or gas that that substance is shown in. So here we're gonna look up SO3 gas on our table. And as you can see on the table, the heat of formation of SO3 gas is negative 395.2 kilojoules per mole, all right? That's what we're gonna put down here. So I'm gonna take this, because this is my product side, I'm gonna insert it down here, and I'm gonna multiply it by the number of moles, that is the coefficient in front of that term, the SO3. See that? So I'll put that two down there. And specifically, I guess if I write out my units properly, I actually should write down two moles, because that's what that represents. Each coefficient is the mole-to-mole -mole ratio, right? So the moles cancel each other out, and this will unit-wise end up just giving you kilojoules, okay? Now that's my product, so that's this term. Now I'm gonna subtract from it the analogous thing for my reactants. Now I looked up on the table S with gas, and that's what we need to do, as opposed to a liquid or solid, for which there are also table data, but they are different, okay? So for S with gas specifically, the number shown on our table is negative 296.9 kilojoules per mole. Now as you look at the reactant side here, what about that O2 gas? What is the heat of formation of that? Heat of formation for any element that's in its elemental state and normal physical state that it exists at, at essentially rough, uh, or roughly room temperature and atmospheric pressure is zero. So at room temperature, it's actually technically 25 degrees Celsius, but that's close to room temperature, one atmospheric pressure, is oxygen, O2, a solid, liquid, or a gas? Yeah, it's a gas, and that's what we have here. Is its formula O2? It is. So again, the heat of formation of any substance in its elemental uh, formula and elemental state, solid, liquid, or gas, is a zero. So we don't have to even worry about that, okay? So anytime you're dealing with uh, such a substance and you're wondering, what is its heat of formation? Just remember, anything in its elemental state formula and physical state, solid, liquid, or gas, just zero. What about this thing? Well, this thing obviously has this term right here, so we're gonna insert it over here in this location for our reactants, okay? So I'm gonna put down right here, my delta H of formation is being negative 296.9 kJs per mole I'm gonna leave my units out because I'm trying to save myself some room. But again, this letter N represents the coefficient in front of it, which is a two. So I'll put a two right there, and I'm gonna put big brackets around there to make sure that we don't get things mixed up, okay? So I take two, multiply it by this negative number, and get an answer. 
I'm going to take 2 multiply it by this negative number and get an answer. And then there's a negative sign in front of that. So this is going to end up being a negative term. And the negatives cancel each other out. So it's a negative term. And I add that together with a positive term. And the final units on that will end up being kilojoules because the moles again get canceled out. The moles that I have not written here would get canceled out as well. So the final unit is kilojoules. And when I plug that all into my calculator, I end up getting negative 197.2. Now, if you want to round to the correct number of sig figs, I think you can. I'm not going to be too uh, hung up about that, but there we go, one, negative 197.2. Now, that answer is the answer that we get for the easy way, the quote unquote easy way, as I call it. It's going to be slightly different, but pretty, pretty close if we go the long route, which is the Hess's Law way that I'll show you right now. So the Hess's Law approach is a little bit more complicated, but in some cir circumstances is absolutely necessary. In other circumstances, if you have the data that you need, you can do it the easy way that I just showed you. Nevertheless, I'm going to show you the Hess's Law way just so you know. The Hess's Law approach involves doing two different processes. The first is you have to write down the uh, heat of formation equation for each substance in this target equation. Okay, So we do that with the, the full thermodynamic uh, chem or thermochemical equation with the delta H of formation. And I've shown you uh, that in an earlier video. I think I have links to those videos in the description below or floating over my head somewhere. Anyway, so that is the first sort of half of this process. The second half of the process is to then take those thermochemical equations and manipulate them mathematically so that you can add them up and have them arrive at this target equation. In doing that process, you then add up the accompanying delta H's, and they should all add up to be the delta H of this overall reaction. Okay, So that's where we're going to go. First half of the process, we're going to write down the thermochemical equation of formation for each one of these substances, all right? Starting with, with SO3 gas. Now again, as I've stated in an earlier video, we begin by just writing SO3 gas on the product side. I want to write it forming from its parent elements, sulfur okay, and oxygen. Now oxygen in its elemental state has a form of O2 because it's one of the seven diatomics. All other substances will just assume have elemental uh, formulas of just that element, or just that atom, a single atom alone. Okay? What physical state is oxygen under standard conditions? Is it solid, liquid, or gas? Yeah, it's a gas, so I'll write down gas, as you can see in this table here. What about sulfur? It's a solid, so I'll write down solid right there. Then I'm going to put a plus between the two. Okay. Now, I need to make sure that I balance it. But with thermochemical formation equations, I have to balance it such that I keep a 1 coefficient in front of the product. I cannot change that to a 2 or a 3 or anything else, or else I'll mess it up. The rule is I have to keep this a 1, which sometimes involves using fractions as coefficients on the left. You'll see that I've got one sulfur on the left, one sulfur on the right. The sulfurs are good. I have two oxygens on the left and three oxygens on the right. So what do I do then? Well, again, I might initially be tempted to start adding coefficients here, but again, because of the rule, I have to keep a 1 right there. So I'm going to have to add fractions to the left. So I have to come up with a fraction such that I could put it here. It would multiply by 2 to arrive at 3. What fraction is that? Yeah, it's 3 halves. You can see that 3 halves multiplies by 2. The 2's cancel each other out, and I'm left with 3 on the left. That is now balanced. The next thing that I have to do is write down the delta H of formation for this particular substance, which I have to pull from a table. So, And I need to make sure that I match it, too. I need to look up SO3 gas. Make sure you don't accidentally look up SO3 liquid or solid, because they will have different numbers. So as you look up on the table, you can see that SO3 gas's delta H of formation is negative 395.2, and the units are kilojoules per mole. And I have to write that a little bit small to keep them on screen, OK? Now I'm going to do the same thing for my SO2 up here. I write it on the right side of my equation here. Okay, Make sure to match the solid liquid state uh, or solid liquid gas state correctly. Okay, I'll write that down. Parent elements are sulfur, so I'll write sulfur solid here on the left. And O2, and O2 is, of course, a gas. So I write that on the left as well. And as it turns out, this is completely balanced as is. So I don't have to add any coefficients at all. But I do have to add the delta H of formation under standard state conditions for SO2 gas. Make sure you don't mix it up with SO2 liquid or solid. I look on the appendix, and I end up seeing that SO2 gas, the standard state of formation, is negative 296.9. And again, the units are kJs per mole. I'm going to leave them off just to save myself time, OK? So this is the first phase of being able to take the Hess's law approach to coming up with the delta H of reaction like this. It is to come up with the uh, reaction of formation for each of the reactants of products shown. Now, you might ask, why in the world are you not figuring out the uh, delta H reaction of formation of O2? Ah, the answer is because O2 is elemental oxygen. That is in its elemental state. It's delta H of formation. The only way you can form that is by, I mean, you can't, you can't pull that apart and form it from smaller uh, substances or anything. There's no, and the delta H of formation value anyway, the heat of formation is zero. 
So any uh, heat of formation for any substance in its elemental state is zero. So I don't have to worry about O2. And same thing would hold for anything else in its elemental state and physical state, solid, liquid, or gas, okay? So what I have is these two equations. What I now need to do is use the principles I've talked about in another video that I've got linked to before low and maybe floating above my head, I'm not sure, uh, in order to manipulate these equations and arrive at the target equation, okay? So I'm gonna start by looking at equation one and find something that's unique to this equation that matches this equation up here. Is there anything that's completely unique to this equation that also appears in the target equation up top? Yeah, this SO3 is. There's a problem though. The SO3 has a two in this equation. It only has a one here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this equation and I'm gonna times everything by two, okay? When I do that, I end up getting that right there. And hopefully you can follow that through. Again, I, I times everything by two, including the delta H of formation there at the end, okay? Now, we'll go on to equation two. What's something in this equation that is unique to the tar that's unique to this equation and is also found in the target? Yeah, it's the SO2 gas, isn't it? The problem, there's two problems here. First of all, the SO2 gas in the target has a two in front of it. So I'm gonna have to multiply everything by two. And the SO2 gas is on the right side of the yield sign here, but it's on the left side of the yield sign up top. So what do I do there? I'm gonna have to do two things. First of all, I'm gonna have to reverse or flip this equation, left to right, right to left, products for reactants and vice versa. And I'm going to have to multiply everything by two. So I'm gonna write down reverse and times two. You see that okay? So if I flip everything, it changes the sign of that delta H, and then I'm gonna take that and times it by two. So flip everything, times everything by two, and see what we get. You see that? Again, you'll note that I changed the delta H uh, sub F to positive. It was negative originally, but because I flipped this, it changes to positive. And of course, I times everything by two, including that value. Now, if I've done everything correctly, I should be able to add these two manipulated equations together and have them arrive at my target equation. Remembering that just like algebra, things will cancel each other out and add up to like terms, okay? On left and right side of the yield sign, just as if it were an equal side in an algebra equation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda add up everything that's on the left side of these yield signs and get what I end up with at the end and do the same thing for everything that's on the right side of these yield signs. But I can cancel out like terms. For example, you can see that I've got two sulfurs on the left and I have two sulfurs on the right. Those can cancel each other out, okay? You can also see that I have two, all right, no, let's see, I have three O2s on the left and two O2s on the right. Now those don't cancel each other out because they're not the same number, but they can algebraically be moved around. For example, if I subtracted two O2s from the right side and from the left side, from both sides of the equation, this would get canceled out and I would end up with three minus two is one mole of O2 gas. You see what I'm saying? So I subtract two moles of O2 from the right and from the left and I end up with one mole remaining. Now everything else doesn't have like terms so I can write everything else down just as is. I bring down my two SO2 gases and I bring down my two SO3 gases, and I just wanna make sure when I'm all done, I'll get out of the way so you can see, that this lines up and matches my target equation. I think it does, and that's confirmation that we've done our manipulation via Hess's law correctly. So what that also means is that we've, uh, we just need to add these up, we just add them up, and we should arrive at the correct final answer. So I have to take two, multiply by this negative 395.2, get an answer, and add to that two multiplied by this positive 296.9. And don't mess up your signs there. You'll get the wrong answer, okay? Make sure you do that correctly. So this is a negative number, this is a positive number. I get this, and I get this, and then I add the two together. And when I did that earlier, I ended up getting negative 196.6 kilojoules. Again, it's not exactly the same number as the 197 point whatever that we got using the easy way, but it's really, really close. So you can see that these are two different approaches to be able to arrive at the same end destination.